How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake. We are out here at the firewood stand. I just put six fresh bundles in there. Yesterday was Chris and Sarah's wedding and uh, it was a great time. Sarah and I had an absolute blast. But when we got home late last night, we saw that the firewood stand had completely been wiped out. Um, so I just made up a bunch of new bundles, filled it up, and now we have to fill up the four loose stacks um that way this this puppy is filled up and ready for this beautiful sunday that we're having here once i get the firewood stand filled back up we have a new toy to play with and modify a little bit here if you guys have been following along with the channel for the past couple of years you know that uh we get a decent amount of leaves here on this big front lawn it's a big hill um considering we live on a big hill and it's kind of a pain in the ass to use a backpack blower for the whole thing. So um, this is a new toy that we're going to be playing with. And hopefully it will help speed up our leaf removal process here this fall in southwestern Connecticut. Oh yeah, bunch of cash. That's always a good thing. All right, guys, so we just finished up loading the firewood stand, so that is one thing checked off the list. Now, let me show you what I got going on here with this new blower. So guys, this is a monster power equipment, 14 horsepower leaf blower. Um, this thing has the 14 horsepower Subaru motor on it. As you can see here, and I actually found this thing on Facebook Marketplace. A gentleman had bought it, converted it to work on the back of his tractor, as you can see here with this three-point hitch mount, and basically used it for like two hours total, and then subsequently cut down all of the trees around his property, so he really didn't have many leaves to blow anymore. So it just kind of sat the last couple of years. Um, this thing, when I first fired it up, you could literally smell the new smell, you know, burning off like the paint and chemicals and stuff on the exhaust. This thing is a beast. Uh, it blows really hard. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to have this thing. Um, there are a couple little modifications I'd like to do to change it up just to make it work a little bit better for me. Um, this handle that he left here just kind of gets in the way. I have no intentions of actually pushing this thing around. It's pretty heavy to begin with. Um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this handle off, remove these brackets for both the throttle and the uh, airflow adjustment, as you can see down there and just get rid of the handle altogether. Um, now, you, you'll see I don't have my quick hitch on anymore because this handle actually gets in the way of using the quick hitch, and I don't really wanna have to futz around with adjusting all three of my uh, three-point hitch attachments every time I go from like the big tool rack to this thing. So um, I think we could cut that off, and what I got here actually are two new longer throttle cables, which I'm hoping will be long enough to reuse some of the parts on these, mainly the cable. Um, hook it up to these mounts here for the throttle and the airflow adjustment. And then I also got some heavy duty magnets in here. And my plan is to be able to move these two adjustments up here to the fender of the tractor. That way I don't have to reach around and you know struggle to try and deal with the throttle and the airflow adjustment. Um, the last thing that I got for it is this hour meter because there isn't one on it and I figured might as well put one on. So yeah, that's basically what I think I'm gonna be trying to do here today and then hopefully we can fire it up and you know, use it not on its first maiden voyage. I've already blown a little bit with it, but uh, try and clear some leaves.
Okay, as you can see here, these uh, two throttle cables, this new one's about two and a half foot longer. Um, so that should work out pretty good. Should give me enough clearance to hopefully make it up to the back of the tractor. So we're gonna slide that one in. Okay guys, we kind of skipped ahead a little bit here, um, but we got the both of the new throttle cables in, one for the air adjustment, one for the actual throttle engine power itself. Um, you can see I got these magnets just temporarily mounted up with 3M, um, like double-sided sticky. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work all that well because these magnets are actually super strong. So when I go to pull these off, like the fender of the tractor, um, it might just pull off the double-sided sticky stuff, but before I drilled or did anything, I just wanted to see, you know, like how they worked and where exactly um, they were gonna reach to. So as you can see, we, uh, we have much longer, you know, reach now. This is the engine power, and this one is our airflow control flapper thing down there. So um, now that the handle is off, we should be able to put back on the big tool rack three point quick hitch. Um, and this should be three point hitch compatible. So let's try it out. Okay guys, minor snafu here. I did not realize, but this three point hitch, you know, adapter that this previous guy owner uh, mounted up here is actually not quick hitch compatible as it sits. Um, these pins are a little too, you know, they're, they're too narrow basically. So I just called Tractor Supply and they have the appropriate quick hitch uh, bushing kit which allows you to extend the reach of the pins um, and it also gives it a wider, um, you know, like diameter to actually sit down in these hooks here on the quick hitch. So I'm gonna run up to Tractor Supply quick and grab that and then we should be in business. Okay, so I'm happy to say that the throttle control easily reaches up to the fender of the tractor here. Um, I mean, you can see I will probably have it run something like that or, you know, angled like that um, just so that I can get it. The airflow one, not quite as much. Man, these magnets are strong. Um, it just barely reaches. Once I actually get this thing hooked up, we'll see where we're able to reach to. I actually just rerouted the line outside of that hole to give it a little bit extra reach. Um, but even if I was able to get the airflow adjustment, you know, up here on the roll cage or something, um, that would be better than where it was all the way down here. So I'm gonna run to Tractor Supply, get that bushing kit, and hopefully we can get to blowing some leaves. All right, now one thing I wanted to address was the fact that a lot of you are probably gonna be like, Jake, why did you go out and buy a push blower that somebody has, you know, converted to go on the back of a tractor instead of just buying a PTO powered, you know, leaf blower or debris blower or whatever they call them. Um, <laughs> I looked into those. I've actually been looking for one on the used market for like two years now, maybe even three years. Um, and basically, none, 
I haven't really been able to find any on the used market for a price that I am, you know, really willing to pay. Most of the ones that I found on the used market, they're asking basically full retail, maybe a little bit less, and those blowers go for about seven, five to seven thousand dollars new. Um, I reached out to Buffalo Turbine, which is by far the you know, preferred brand that I would have liked to have had because turbine technology is a lot better than just like a, a impeller kind of, you know, blower fan. Um, those things are super powerful. We use them at work. They work really well. They have full 12 volt adjusting of, you know, where you can pitch the air and everything. I got a quote and it was like $7,000 for one. They don't really pop up on the used market all that often, um, at least around here. So if any of you guys know of one or have one that you're willing to sell or part with or you know know somebody that has one, let me know. Shoot me an email, diy one at gmail.com. But basically, the reason why I didn't get one is because they're just simply out of my price range. Um, you know, it's not something that I would use on a daily basis. It's probably something I would use more on like a monthly basis for both, you know, cleaning up the wood yard and then obviously in the fall to do the leaves, um, you know. So that is why I ended up going with this little bit cheaper alternative. But let me tell you, compared to my nine horsepower Little Wonder that I initially hooked up to the back of the tractor, this monster blower is way more powerful. I mean, an extra five horsepower may not seem like a lot, but when you're talking leaf blowers, five extra horsepower is a big difference. Um, not to mention this machine was made actually here in Connecticut, in Old Saybrook, Connecticut, um, all built in the USA. So um, it's pretty cool, like little mom and pop kind of a smaller blower, you know, company, outdoor power equipment company. So just wanted to throw that out there. That's why I didn't go with a PTO powered blower. Would have liked to, but the wallet just simply won't allow it at this point. All right, guys, we went to Tractor Supply and they had the two bushings, but the kit had been taken apart, I guess, and they did not have the roll pins that actually get hammered into the bushings themselves. Uh, they had a bunch of different roll pins, none the right size. I believe I need about 7 sixteenths um, is actually the, the size of the, the, the diameter of the hole, so I think I need about a half inch uh, roll pin. I'm gonna drive down to the hardware store and see if they have something that big. Uh, I'm kinda gonna be surprised if they do, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, I, it always seems to, like whenever I go to Tractor Supply, I, I even called ahead and gave the, the woman the SKU number and you know said, are you sure that you actually have this? You physically see it on the shelf? And she said, yes. Go up there, didn't have it. Tractor Supply, get your shit together. All right guys, I'm feeling kind of stupid right now because I just spent a pretty good amount of time um, trying to get these bushings to work for the quick hitch. Um, but what I failed to realize is that <laughs> the height here isn't even the proper height for the quick hitch. Um, so this thing that he welded on here, unfortunately, just regardless, is not quick hitch compatible. Um, so I spent all that time trying to <clears throat> make this so that it would work, work with the quick hitch and it's not going to. Uh, long story short, I think I need to order a new one of these that is quick hitch compatible and re-weld it on, you know, kind of like he did here to these support brackets. Uh, that's, that's pretty frustrating. Um, such is life though, I guess. Um, I did go ahead and mount, uh, you know, drilled these brackets out and mounted it with an actual um, screw. So now we don't have to worry about at least pulling off the tape because these magnets are pretty strong. Um, that really sucks. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this quick hitch because it is now 2.58. Been working on this better part of the day and uh, gotta blow some leaves. Okay guys, it didn't turn out exactly how I had anticipated or planned, but we got the hour meter on. Um, we did, we're not able to make it quick hitch compatible, but that's all right. We rerouted the controls. You can see I got the airflow control here. 
I really need that one to be a little bit longer. I'm gonna have to go back onto the internet. Um, I was able to find a 72 inch, but, or I'm sorry, 60 inch, but I think I really need like a 72 to make it um, long enough to reach up here. The throttle control reaches just fine. I put a little thing here just to help protect the paint from the magnets. Um, so we're gonna fire this thing up and see how it does. You can see there's leaves all over, but all the oaks um, are basically, and a lot of the birches still holding onto their leaves. So we're going to blow the leaves up here in the front. Sarah and I are going away to another friend's wedding this upcoming week. Um, so I just want to, you know, at least clean off the majority. This is by no means are we trying to get every last leaf. Uh, we're just going to do the big spots what we can with this new blower and see how it does. So, uh, you know, we'll focus on all the flower beds and everything at a later date. So I think it should work out pretty well. Here we go.
hour meter works. 0.7 hours so far. Well, okay guys, first real run with the new 14 horsepower monster blower modified to go on the uh, three point hitch here of the Kubota L3901. Um, I mean, it worked pretty darn well. You know, it's not, you're not gonna get every last leaf, but this lawn has not been mowed in weeks. And when I say weeks, I probably mean over a month. Uh, things just kind of slowed down here growing. <clears throat> um, so keep in mind the grass is pretty long. I mean, yeah, there are still leaves down here on the ground um, and it's not gonna get everything but uh, at least now the majority of the leaves are off. I'll be able to mow the lawn, kind of get the grass a little bit shorter, and then we'll be able to start from square one. I mean, a lot of these leaves you could tell just because of how gray they are. You know, they've been packed down in there for quite some time. You know, they're all covered in sand and stuff. Um, but this, <laughs> this blower is a hell of a lot stronger than the old Little Wonder. Um, I mean, you can just see how many leaves it, pushed up here into this pile, um, completely almost like cleaned out this weedy grass area. Um, it blew some pretty big sticks here. Just gonna toss those. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think you guys get the point. It's a hell of a lot easier and probably faster once I get a little more used to it than the old backpack blower. Um, I think in the future, I will probably go around like when I'm trying to do a more in-depth, uh, detail-oriented leaf cleanup, you know, in all the little nooks and crannies and corners. I'll probably go around first with the backpack blower and just kind of blow the perimeter. That way I have a, a path for the tractor to drive through where, you know, because you, you can't get right up to every last little corner with this thing just because of the size of, you know, the machine and the tractor and everything. So I think going around and kind of creating a, a clearing, a pathway for the tractor to drive and then use it to kind of blow the majority of the leaves is the way that this thing will work best. Um, so I'm excited to keep playing with it, you know, as the leaves continue to fall. These two sugar maples up here in the front are pretty much done, but we still got some leaves on that sugar maple and all the oaks here are basically still, I don't know if you can tell, but they're like basically green still. Uh, the birches are bright yellow. They look pretty nice. And actually our hydrangeas up here, the pink flowers and yellow leaves, they look gorgeous this year. They kind of look like, reminds me of pink lemonade almost. Uh, so those look pretty nice as well. So guys, I think that's gonna wrap this one up on the initial, you know, first use of the new monster blower. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I've been doing a little talking with some different people and if this is something that would interest you and I feel like it could interest quite a few people that aren't ready to make that $7,000, $5,000 jump up to a full size, you know, PTO turbine blower for the back of their tractor but you might already have a big powerful push blower and a backpack blower and a tractor. And if there were some sort of kit to accommodate your type blower where you could kind of just like bolt on this apparatus where it would be able to hook up to your three point hitch, it would come with the appropriate uh, lengthened throttle cables and stuff for the different types of blowers. Let me know if you'd be interested in that because there is potentially an opportunity where we might be able to actually make a product, um, whether it's the blower itself or like I said, it just bolts to your existing push blower um, is yet to be seen. But uh, if, it, if something like that would interest you, throw it down in the comments below. Also, give me your feedback, what you think I could do differently, uh, change up on this thing because uh, as you saw, not everything went exactly according to plan. So as always, guys, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. Questions, comments, feedback, throw it in that comment section. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.